knew I, I told Kev, I, I'm church dad, I can't go into another church, but uh, since they're so close, I can't resist this guy with the monkey again. I don't know, there's somebody making a movie out of here. Maybe I'll be discovered. We're in the art district, by the way, where Frida Kahlo's house is. Get something to eat, and maybe we'll see it. First, I gotta see if I can get myself on Telemundo. street scenes. Let's catch up with Kev. They uh, tort this uh, restaurant they here, which are meat filled, like meat filled. I'm just gonna have some tacos with that. There's a view out the window from the second floor. You really know this place like the back of your hand? You think so? Yeah. It's pretty good for not being here for. I mean, years it's pretty amazing the places that you brought me to, yeah. and haven't hit a ringer yet. The places I take you to, Tapito, I almost get his killed. So. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> it's a different kind of experience. Can salsa? Yes. Okay. Gracias, señorita. Gracias. So, Cab, explain. What's this one? She just said uh, this one's made out of like a tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. it's really Spicy. Just have it in there. Okay. That one's a little bit spicy. Okay. That's a little spicy. All right. Kev's got his torta, yep. which is the Mexican version of a sub. <laughs> yep. Supposed to be the most famous uh, ice cream spot in Coyoacan. Show you some of the flavors here. I'm not usually an ice cream person. I got coconut, they got cerveza, which is beer, coffee, Oreo. I'll just scoop it up for you here. Muy bien, gracias. Very good. Gracias. 
Gracias. Gracias. A little tip always, a little tip always greases the wheels, you know. So this is one of the reasons I stopped. I'm not normally an ice cream eater, but it's getting ready to pour rain here, so. And when that comes in, there's going to be a scramble for seating. All right. And I've already had a taste, and it's excellente. Take one more shot to see if I can get a look inside of this uh, church. Always got people making a beeline for me. The one thing the Spanish put up a ton of churches, didn't they? Woo! Is this 1628? I got no idea. I have no idea if this is a church entrance or not here. Well, maybe it is. It's weird, right next door they got King Todd exhibit right in the church building, so... You see some weird stuff in Mexico. Probably the church isn't even open. No, I guess not. Maybe it is, I don't know. Cross of Saint Tierra. Hold on. Boy, this was worth it, huh? I have no idea what's going on here, though. It's like we were at a restaurant, a King Todd exhibit. I don't know. Just, just hard to get a use on. It's hard to get a handle on mixed use places. But it's beautiful. Look at that orange tree in the middle over there, or on the side. Five pesos for the bathroom. So I guess it's been decommissioned as a church, I don't know. One of those mysteries of Mexico. We may never know. But if you want to go see the King Tut exhibit, you're welcome to it.
out. Guys, here is the uh, Frida Kahlo Museum over here. Where she was, uh, I've joked about it before, she was probably the most famous artist in Mexico. And I think some of her paintings sold for the millions of dollars in New York. One of them went up there. So there is her home there. Let's see if we can cross the road carefully here. Kind of get a look at it. I think it's closed on the inside. I don't, I'm not going to pay 20 bucks to go in. That's pretty, pretty barred up, huh? Let's do a quick run down in the back where nobody's hanging out. She called it the Blue House. She, Diego Rivera was her husband twice. They both kind of messed around. But Mexico, Argentina. The Blue House. I lived here, I think, a couple years or not too long. They had a very stormy relationship. She, of course, was terribly injured in a uh, bus crash and also had polio. She had a miserable life of pain and took a painting. And had very stormy relationships, lesbian relationships. Relationship was married twice to Diego Rivera. Definitely communist leanings. And incidentally, Leon Trotsky House is near here too, who of course was the first secretary of, of the Commissar of Foreign Affairs for the Soviet Union. He was all good until Lenin died, and well, we'll tell that story in a bit. Let's go around the front side until the cop stops us here. The Blue House. Blue House. That's it. So I'm going to stop filming now. I don't want a problem. I mentioned earlier the murder of Leon Trotsky who was a Ukrainian but got very caught up with the whole communist movement was a real uh, devotee of uh, Lenin and really believed in the principles of communism but then as Lenin became ill and Stalin began his rise to power Trotsky realized that the whole Soviet Union was turning into a giant power grab. There was no equality amongst uh, workers. You were either one of the privileged leaders or you were really nothing. And it left a really sour taste in his mouth. And in 1929, uh, after a lot of disagreements with uh, Stalin and with the party, he was exiled from uh, the Soviet Union and eventually made his way to Mexico. Now, he was a very brilliant man and he did a lot of publishing, a lot of writing, and he was very heavily critical of the whole Soviet experiment, which he thought was a major scam by the 1930s. It had just turned into just mass murder executions, 
farm programs, it uh, went crazy and just, it was just a mess. Uh, just wholesale murders and executions of uh, people in great uh, cleanses of the uh, party. And uh, he criticized that heavily on a, on a worldwide basis. And a lot of his writing was published everywhere around the world, much to the chagrin of Stalin and a lot of the uh, proponents of the Soviet Union and communism. And he decided to have him executed. It was not a one-time deal. There were multiple attempts on the life of Leon Trotsky, and uh, the, the man had finally murdered him, Ramon Mercader, I believe his name was. I think he was an Argentinian. Uh, he had two attempts. First time he failed, and Trotsky's security was able to fend it off. The second time he was able to conceal an ice pick it looked like a mini axe. One end of it had the flat blade, and the other end of it had the sharp pick. And the flat blade he was able to put into Trotsky's head on August 20th, 1940. And that was the end of that. This was his home here, now turned in to a museum. That's about really all that you're going to see. Officially the first accident I've seen in uh, Mexico City. Guy just rear-ended. I don't know, it was a lady or man. She was coming high speed, just nailed. I guess he's calling the cop, I don't know. Are you okay, hasta bien? Like I'm gonna be able to do anything, right? 